Here we have verse 26 of the seventh chapter of the Gospel of John. We are overhearing a conversation involving Jesus and the religious leaders, and the eavesdroppers to this are people who are visiting the temple who understand that there's been a somewhat hostile attitude for the religious leaders in their thoughts about Jesus, and in fact that's even extended to the point that they might be contemplating trying to destroy him, and yet now they see that these religious leaders are essentially not taking any action as Jesus continues to teach, as he continues to preach openly in the temple, and they are asking themselves, well, wait a minute, isn't this the one that at some point or other we understood that they were so hostile to this character that they were actually contemplating uh, putting him to death? And yet now they notice that he's standing there speaking openly. And that's really the ongoing conversation we have here, as now we are overhearing what amounts to the comments being made by these onlookers there in the temple, Kai and Ide. Kind of an interjection. It, uh, it means behold or look. And look, they're saying, parasia. Uh, this is actually a word that uh, means, uh, it's a noun, it's in the dative, uh, and, and so the noun form of it would be something like openness. However, the use of the dative here is really a kind of dative of reference, so it actually functions somewhat like a, a kind of an adjective, you might say, so, uh, or even an adverb. So now, uh, behold, uh, with openness, you might say, or with respect to openness, or in an open kind of way is the... Uh, idea of it, uh, parousia, means confidence or boldness, that idea. So openly, uh, not really hiding in the shadows, but quite visibly out there. Uh, lale, from laleo, he speaks, I speak is the uh, m meaning of the word. This is a contract verb, so that's why we have the unusual accent there. So uh, with openness, he speaks, kai, uh, uden, uh, this is the uh, uh, the adjective that means no one or nothing, this is the accusative, it's the direct object of this verb, legusen, from lego, I say, this is the third person plural, present active indicative, so uh, they say nothing, this is the direct object, auto then is the uh, dative uh, singular masculine of the third person pronoun, so they say nothing to him. Uh, he's speaking openly, he's out there in the temple, and yet uh, they're not uh, taking any action. And there's a little bit of perplexity, I suppose, in the uh, minds and thoughts of those who are observing this. May poti, kind of hard to translate. Uh, could it be would be the, the idea, but here they're asking a question that might tentatively expect a negative answer, and yet they're also uh, at least allowing the possibility that some different situation has arisen. Uh, alethos, truly an adverb in declinable, so truly, egnosan, this is from gnosko, it's irregular in the way that it's formed, third person plural, aorist, active indicative, gnosko, I know, in this case the subject of this is hoi archontes, this is the rulers, so uh, uh, could it be, you might say, is the force of it, that the rulers truly know hoti, that, uh, hutos, Hutos, uh, the demonstrative pronoun, uh, masculine singular nominative, that this one referring to Jesus, Hutos Esten, from a me, I am, this is the third person singular, present active indicative, that this one is Ho Christos, is the Christ, the anointed one. Uh, as if this crowd that's looking on is wondering, maybe these religious leaders have actually changed their mind, maybe they've actually uh, come to recognize somehow or other in Christ that uh, he is not a charlatan, that he's not an imposter, but in fact that he is truly the Christ. And so the onlookers, perplexed by what's taking place, are beginning to speculate that that may be what's going on with respect to what they're witnessing. 